Welcome everybody to a new episode of Heinrich Böll's um, Heinrich Böll Stiftung's online series Bridges. Um, usually in this format we bring together um, people on the topics of migration and Europe and um, in this particular case we already served a little bit as a bridge um, because we, we were already able to facilitate a meeting between our today's guests and um, I'm very happy to have both of you here today for a follow-up on a indeed very timely and serious issues, uh, issue here today. Um, a warm welcome to both of you, Mrs. Nazifa Beck. Nazifa Beck is elected member of the Afghan parliament since 2019. She represents the northern province of Taha and is currently in exile in Athens here in Greece. Uh, she's one of the founder of the um, parliament in exile, which we will talk about more today or hear more about um, today. And we have Dr. Hannah Neumann with us, who is a member of the European Parliament and human rights spokesperson and peace spokesperson for the Greens European Free Alliance. Um, among other positions, she is vice chair of the Human Rights Committee and, and um, an expert on uh, women in peace, um, which is also closely related to today's topic. So a warm welcome to both of you. And um, I will jump into um, the discussion, starting with you, Nazifa. Um, you are currently, I mean, both of you met already in, in Athens, so no need to introduce you. Um, Nazifa, can you tell us a little bit about um, the current situation, especially for women in Afghanistan? A very brief um, state of the art. We already had a discussion um, bilaterally, but for our audience, how is the current state? How could you sum it up? Yeah, thank you, Nizo John. And uh, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, this is Nadifa Yusuf, a big member of Parliament of Afghanistan. And also, I am for two years uh, the Deputy of Economic Commission of Parliament House. Now I'm in Guinea, uh, living here in Athens. I am uh, speaking with Dani, also, my friend is here. She is uh, helping with me. در رابطه با وضعیت افغانستان متاسفانه که با مدن بعد از 15 آگست و تفاهم نامه دوها حد بزنان از سیستم دولت داری هنسار آزادی بیان و اطلاع در گروه طالبان و بدبختانه که عقیقت های جامعی و عینی افغانستان انکاس داده نمیشه بعد از تفاهم نامه دوها سرنوشت یک ملت یک دولت و یک کشور تغییر کرد امروز وضعیت زنان حق تعلیم حق تحصیل حق کار از زن و دختر افغان گرفتر شده بدبختی های که نصیب مردم افغانستان شد امروز همه جهان بر همه جهان آشکار و ویداست مردم افغانستان چی میگذره بالا مردم افغانستان این وضعیت پیش آمده در کشور برای ما آزاردهنده است و وضعیت است که غیر قابل قبول بر مردم افغانستان است Okay, the current situation in Afghanistan is uh, uh, deplorable and uh, shocking. In these past 20 years, in the joint and uh, uh, fruitful efforts of international forces and the people of Afghanistan, the republication system and significant share and presence of women in political and social power. With the, the signing the Doha uh, Memorandum and uh, the 15th August, the feet of the nation and the country changed. And the beginning though, of the misery of the Afghan people was the removal of the women from the government uh, targeting the civil uh, protesters and targeted assassinations of uh, Exit servicemen, unknown uh, abductions, and uh, prominent figures, uh, civil societies, doctors, journalists, and members of the House of Representatives. All is the reality of closing of the Parliament gate. This is no monitoring from the Taliban crimes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, this was brief, thank you. We will um, further elaborate on, on a few things. Um, 
Hannah, um, you came to Athens to meet Nazifa and her colleagues, um, other representatives of the Afghan parliament, all women. Um, what made you come and, and um, what motivates you to, to look at um, their situation and at the situation of Afghanistan? First of all, thank you, Neda and the Bell Foundation um, for having organized this discussion and Azifa for making the time um, basically to meet me again, this time digitally. Well, I think as someone who has worked on Afghanistan and with people of Afghanistan for many, many years, we were maybe equally shocked um, to see the developments after the Doha agreement, after the withdrawal, and the takeover of the Taliban of, well, many, many cities in Afghanistan and the end also Kabul and the government. And we were also shocked to see how the evacuation was going, but especially how many people could not leave the country that wanted to leave the country. And it has to be said how many people died, how many people fo are forcibly disappeared, how many women and, and girls are, are being kidnapped these days. Um, so, so that's something that, that, that just touched me deeply and was emotionally challenging for me as well, because many of these women are, are friends of mine, are colleagues of mine, or are colleagues of mine in the sense of being members of parliament as I am. Um, and while we, we had to deal with the situation, it was clear that to organize evacuations, to organize humanitarian aid, to organize girls going to school, we will have to talk to the Taliban, just as a matter of fact not because we think the Taliban is are legitimate, not because we think they will be good people governing the country, but just as a matter of fact, because they are at the moment in charge of state institutions, so we need to deal with them. However, I was never willing to accept that the Taliban are the only people who speak on behalf of Afghanistan, um, which is why me and a number of colleagues of mine until today try to find ways to engage um, with the people of Afghanistan um, and well members of the parliament in Afghanistan uh, the elected parliament so elected members of parliament be if they are in exile or in Afghanistan doesn't matter in the first place are people that I would like to listen to that I would like to hear their opinions and that I would like to get their guidance on how to deal um, with Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan, but also the Taliban in this very difficult setting. Um, and that is why when I found out that quite a big number of, of them, especially women who are at the moment totally excluded from, from the politics uh, or from Taliban politics are in Greece, I said, well, I, I have to go there and meet them because we all know that these, especially if it's about difficult subjects, uh, discussions are always better if you are in the same room and that is what made me just jump on a plane and go to Athens. Thank you Hannah. So um, you already raised the question. Um, I mean um, Nazifa you speaking to us here today as one representative um, we are curious to hear about your network and um, about um, the, the already established connections you have as a group, but, but what would you say, what is the current way as European Union or um, EU member states, how to deal with um, Afghanistan, I mean, considering the fact that um, there should be humanitarian um, aid for the people, um, so so what what is what is your your position on that? And um, also maybe you can you could also tell us a little bit more about um, the network you're you're creating. Nazifa, you're on mute, so we cannot hear you. So. بعد از تبیید و ماجرت متاسفانه از سرنوشت زنهای افغانستان از زنهای سیاسی پالین مدنی نونالستا و خبرنگارا آمدنشون و بیرون شدنشون از کشور ما ما خواستیم که برای جهان نشان بدیم که واقعا با سرنوشت زنهای افغانستان با سرنوشت سیاسی و این میزنهای افغانستان ما منصورت 
زن این روز افغان واقعا زن نیست که مثل با گذشته گزه... با خبر بگرده ما خواستیم که را, را ادامه بدیم و صدای زنای افغانستان در جهان فراموش نشه با اهداف خود دنبال بکنیم اما قسم که اهداف ما در پارلمان و سایر زنان دادخواهی برای زنای افغان حق مشارکت سیاسی حق تحصیل کار بود و امروز هم به او هدف ادامه بدیم ما با نشستهایی که داشتیم با زنای نخبه زنای نخبه سیاسی از کشورهای مختلف و خصوص نشستی که با خانم هنا داشتیم در سفارت آمریکا تر ایجاد شبکه یا نتورک برای زنای پارلمان افغانستان مطرح کردیم و خواستیم که ما اهداف خود از این طریق دنبال بکنیم و بر جهان نشان بدیم که زن امروز افغان باید فراموش نکنین و کنار زنای افغانستان باشین هدف عمده و اساسی که ما میخوایم از طریق شبکه به او نایل بیاییم اول اولین هدف ما می است که دادخواهی برای تامین عدالت و حضور و نقش زنان و حق مشارکت سیاسیشون بدون تبعیض جنسیتی باید برشون دوباره داده شود و دوم اینکه که وضعیت خیلی در کشور دومین هدف ما می است که جلب حمایت جامعه جانی را برای بهبود و وضعیت معیشتی مردم افغانستان که فعلا در وضعیت معیشتی بعد خراب به سر ببرد و ارائه خدمات بشر دوستانه را به صورت یکسان برای مردم افغانستان تحت نظارت جامعه جهانی صورت بگیره و فعلا وضعیت کنونی برای بهبود اوضاع کنونی در افغانستان یکی از هدف عمده و اساسی باز که سول پایدار در افغانستان تامین تامین شود و وضعیت کنونی در افغانستان تغییر بکنه و حکومت که فراگیر خمه شمول از اقلیت های قومی و مذهبی در افغانستان به وجود بیاید این خواست ما بود که تلاش, تلاش بکنیم که دوباره دخترها شامل به مکتب شان مکتب به مکتب باز بگردن و دروازه های, تب... دروازه های مکاتب برای دخترهای افغان باز شد به خاطر همی عدد زنهایی که در یونان هستن و اما قسم که دادخواهی در سراسر سر کشورهای مختلف جهان از طریق, از طریق زنهای افغان صورت گرفته و ما هم به تعداد 25 نفر نماینده های پارلمانه که در یونان حضور داشتیم خواستیم که یک شبکی از زنهای سیاسی را داشته باشیم و برای مردم افغانستان کار بکنیم و به جهان نشان بدیم که زن افغان بر عقب بر نمیگرده و دوباره میخواین که کار بکنم فعالیت بکنم و سر وظیفه و کار تعلیم و حق تعلیم و تحصیل حق مشارکت سیاسی برشون داده شد after the exile immigration and deportation my first steps and goal was to be the wife of the afghan woman especially the women trapped in my country which makes up half of afghanistan 35 million population and to show the world that their uh, political uh, scientific and destiny was traded i was one of the first women parliamentarians abroad to set up a network of women parliamentarian in meeting with political uh, from the various countries like the US embassy, like Ms. Hanna, we meet and shared. She was approved that the, uh, uh, her support uh, for Afghan women in the future. The main goals that I want to achieve in the future through the network advocating for justice, the rule of women's presence and their political participation without discrimination, uh, attracted and supported international community to improve the living and social conditions of the Afghan uh, people by providing humanitarian services, effects to educate the young generation, especially girls, improving the current situation in Afghanistan, a comprehensive and inclusive government of ethics and religious um, minorities, creating various uh, legitation group from the network to the international level to achieve the goals of the network. The beginning of the network is complete and um, in the re registration stages. Thank you very much, Nazifa John. So I see, I mean, this is very powerful, right? You're the voice of the Afghan women. I mean, you are the elected representatives, as Hannah Raki said, um, of the Afghan people. So I think it's completely understood that um, you keep doing what you're elected for, basically, also abroad and also in exile. And I must say, um, I'm personally, I was um, very, if I'm allowed to say so, I was very, um, moving and touched um, 
to be able to to meet you, the whole group of of, of yours. Um, you mentioned you're about 25 women um, currently, and it's um, indeed it was an honor. Um, Hannah, I would like to um, look a little bit into the EU's role when it comes to supporting these women. And I mean, what what Nazifa was was elaborating is that we have. We have different challenges here, right? We have um, the situation of those who are still in the country. Um, maybe we can say stuck in the country because many of them are um, in in concrete uh, danger, and and um, there is very there is a severe threat for for many of them. Um, and then there's the overall situation of um, the, the crisis, I mean, financially and um, humanitar from a humanitarian point of view. And then we have those who are um, either in transit countries. Um, I mean, for you, Nazifa, Greece currently is a transit country. You're moving onwards from here. Um, so either in transit or in their destination final, so to say, current destination, what what can the EU do for these different groups of Afghan people, again, focusing also on, on women, focusing on civil society or journalists, for instance, as Nazifa pointed out? I mean, these, these very vulnerable, I mean, powerful groups, but then again, being discriminated and being um, vulnerable to a structural discrimination right now in, in Afghanistan. Uh, thank you for the question, Ed, and I think it is important that we look at the different groups um, with different answers. So, so I would like to give four answers, if that's fine. So the first answer will be for me, for the people who are in Afghanistan, and especially the, but the women, the civil society organizations, the journalists who are targeted by the Taliban because of, of the work they do. So I think here it is important that those who want to leave Afghanistan and well, most of them want to leave Afghanistan because of the Taliban and they hope that they can go back one day and to continue rebuilding their country. Many of them actually lived in, in Western countries and decided to go back to, in Afga to Afghanistan, maybe 2012, 2013, 2014 to rebuild their countries. And now they just in, are in a situation that they want to leave but that they have to leave simply to survive. And here we need to step up evacuation. That's quite clear. I mean, there are so many of these women or vulnerable groups who are on evacuation lists. News that slowly um, evacuation, either by directly by plane or through the member states um, is speeding up again. But I think by far it's not enough. So here we need to improve our own infrastructure in terms of how people can get visa, how people can get out of the country. Um, how do we make sure that they end up in the country where they want to end up and not stuck in transit places? All of that is one homework for the European Union, where I think in some member states, for example, in Germany with a new government, we are clearly um, speeding up things. But it's also important that for those who want to stay in Afghanistan, and there are some who want to stay in Afghanistan, we make it very clear to the Taliban that we are watching them and that any harm that may be done to them will not go unnoticed. And that for those who are already um, uh, forcibly disappeared, for those who are kidnapped, who are in prisons or where their fate is unclear, we demand justice and um, that they will be released again and back with their families. So we, we cannot just focus on evacuation for those in Afghanistan, but we also need to think about protection for those who, who want to stay or, or those who are in who just cannot leave at the moment. Then there's the second answer. This is for the people who are in transit at the moment. So people like Masifa, but um, these are not just members of parliament. There are so many more who, who just went out with the first evacuation situation. And it was a bit of a lottery where you ended up for them. So basically you were either put to Qatar or to Tajikistan and then you were put in planes and then you ended up in Greece, Canada, Germany, Portugal, whatsoever. But you may have work relations to another country. You may have family members in another country. And here it is very important that we find pragmatic non-bureaucratic solutions that these people will be able to go to the countries where they want to go to and not the countries where they ended up um, by accident. 
And then the third answer for me would be who made it to their final destination in exile. It doesn't mean that the problem stopped. Many had to leave their parents, their brother or sister, or their children, even their small children in Afghanistan because of the dramatic evacuation situation. And, and here the whole issue of family reunification um, needs to be um, speeded up in Afghanistan. So we need to find less bureaucratic um, solutions and just need to, to be much faster because it is very difficult to find your place and, and, and define where you want to go in a new country if all the time you're just thinking about your family back in Afghanistan and will they survive and how your children are doing or how, how your parents are doing. Um, we know this and I think that's why it's time that we also solve this one. And Asifa and, and the parliament in exile are working on and many others is how do we make sure that the kind of job that these people have done before, if they were journalists, if they were members of parliament, they can still play a bit of a role like this for the Afghan society, even if they are in exile. Action is somehow just organized by and around the Taliban. And how do, can we get these voices also into the political discussion? How can we provide them with the platform? Because what I always say when it comes to women, it's there's this saying, and I, I think people just don't think a lot about it when they say we 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 need um well we, we need to give give the women of Afghanistan a voice. And what I'm saying is they have a voice, they are super articulate, they know what they want, they have the experience, they have the network, they have also the experience how to deal with the Taliban, because it's not, I mean, they have not just come out of nowhere, the Taliban, they have been there for a long time. So it's more like we need to listen to these women and we need to give them a place at the decision-making table. And it's the same with the journalists. We do not need to tell the stories of Afghanistan. They can tell them, but we need to give them the platform and the room. And I think this will be one of the key challenges for as long as this kind of debates, exchanges, um, political discussions are not possible in Afghanistan. We need to just create the space for, for this to happen well in exile between exile and Afghanistan. Thank you very much. And I think this is indeed one um, crucial aspect of what this network of yours is about. Um, Nazifa John, maybe if you could also elaborate on your very specific expectations for these different groups and, um, and what indeed, I mean, those who, who are watching us um, might also be interested in what can be done. I mean, what could specifically um, no matter from which member state within the EU we are looking at, um, if, if interested people are um, asking their governments to step up efforts, what should it be? Like what, what should be the next steps to, to really support the people of Afghanistan and the women in, in particular? تا این مرحله برای خود معلوم است که ما در شرایط که قرار داشتیم کار کردن بیرون از افغانستان و همان کردن برای ما او طرف وضعیت و بدبخت هایی که نصیب مردم افغانستان شد رو رو های عدف مند فالین مدنی و جورنالست ها و وضعیت بعد اقتصادی مردم افغانستان همه از یا ما را مثلا درگیر مسائل که ما بلاخره کار باید و باید بر مردم افغانستان بکنیم استفای بعدی ما همی است که ما مثلا دادخواهی بکنیم به سطح بین مرالی که اگر واقعا گروه طالب را صفحه بر مذاکره با گروه طالب باز میکنه یا جهان میفای که طالب بر رسمیت بشناسه زن افغان فراموش میکنه در استفای بعدی وضعیت بعد اقتصادی مردم افغانستان وضعیت حقوق بشری که فعلا در افغانستان جریان داره می باید نادیده نگیره کمک‌های بشر دوستانه شو و عملکرد طالبان را نظارت بکنن ناظر اصلی عملکرد طالبان باشن و ما می‌خوایم که همین گروه‌های دادخواهی خود قوت ببخشیم و صدای خود مشترکم با صدای تمام زنایی که در کشورهای مختلف هستند و خود ممثل دموکراسی و آزادی میدانند ما می‌خوایم در قسمت خواستن حق ما را کمک و همکاری بکنند در استعفای بعدی مثلا سازمان‌ها را بالایش مشترکاً فشار وارد بکنند که بر مردم افغانستان حمایت های بشری انجام بکن زمانی که ما یک فعالیت ها رو به مراحل بعدی رسیدیم بخیر به کمک ها نیاز داریم کمک مثل خانم هنا و دوستا و همکارای بین المللی دیگه که با تیپ خانم هنا و سایر عزب سر و سایر کسایی که می پایند 
حمایت های بشری رو در افغانستان هدامه بتن و صدای زن افغان باشن به کمک همکاریشون نیاز داریم در استپای بعدی ما میخوایم که کار رو انجام بدیم Yes, uh, as you know, there is a lot of difficulties Afghan women passed in, uh, in, in some, uh, some months before. And uh, for the next step, we need the international community help, the petrified and background group offered to advise the, uh, in, uh, the Taliban, while the history of Afghanistan, it has been proven, uh, that, uh, for example, the jirgas and the subordinate uh, of the uh, ruling regime and carry out their decisions uh, at the will of ruling regime, the Taliban will not be clear violence of the rights of women and girls yeah, at the European Union and it is member states not be recognized in this group and to provide humanitarian assistance through non-governmental organization until the Taliban establish the right of the women participate uh, politically in education and work and uh, in inclusive government of ethics uh, minorities continue to minority perform of the Taliban and continue their pressures. Thank you. I think this is exactly what, what Hannah um, was, I mean, what, what you meant, right? Um, just, just looking at the time, we're running out of time, but I wanted to briefly ask you, um, these days there are the Afghan Women Days in the European Parliament. So um, I'm not sure they're still ongoing. Maybe we want to take the chance to um, briefly say what it's all about. Well, the Afghan Women Days actually they just started about three hours ago um, and it is it is quite a fascinating story of um, well how the parliament can sometimes push the agenda of the European Parliament so when um, there was the withdrawal of um, of the US forces and we saw the dramatic situation unfolding in Afghanistan um, it was very important to us to make a clear point that we are not going to turn our back and going to forget um, the people of Afghanistan, but especially the many women that have fought for women's rights, not just the last 20 years, but I mean, for, for, for a long, long, long time, although it's very difficult for them. So we decided for the Sakharov Prize, which is the big human rights prize of the European Parliament, to nominate 11 Afghan women and not just not because they are just 11 women who vote for women's rights in Afghanistan, um, but as a representative set of politicians, of artists, of entrepreneurs to showcase also to the world, I mean, how strong women are in Afghanistan, because sometimes there's still this stereotype. Um, about Afghan women uh, behind the burqa, which is clearly, clearly not true for the majority of Afghan women. And they didn't win, so they just came in second um, behind Navalny because of political uh, considerations and votes. Um, and that's why we said, well, but we still want to receive them in the parliament and give them this big platform and the big um, representation. And that's what we're having for two days now. And we extended a bit um, the whole thing to include other, especially politically active um, Afghan women in this program. So for example, another woman who is part of the parliament in exile in Greece, upon my invitation is now in, 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 in the program, as well as a number of other uh, actual or former Afghan MPs. And right now with the talks um, happened, for example, in Norway with the Taliban, it is a very clear statement that, okay, we need to talk with the Taliban just to manage things like humanitarian aid, but it doesn't mean that they are that we see them as representatives of Afghanistan. The women that we are talking to today and tomorrow in the parliament that we have invited, um, some of them were able to travel, so they sit with us in the hemicycle, which is the holy, the holy heart of the parliament. Um, these are the ones um, we want to talk to. Great, thanks for the update, Hannah. I think this is indeed a good example. And um, I'm sure we all continue doing this in various forms. I mean, um, we as Heinrich Böll Foundation here in Thessaloniki um, have our regional program on migration. And 
of course, I mean, today we talked about more things than um, migration for sure, but I think for our context here, it's also super relevant what you're doing, Nazifa John and the whole group, because I think it's really important that people understand also the reasons for forced migration and why Afghan people are in Greece or where um, any other country um, they might be forced to, to go to. I think this is also um, quite, as far as the Greek context, it's quite relevant because you managed to already bring up the issue of human rights, of human rights violations um, with the um, seizure of power of Taliban in summer. I think there is a huge debate in Greece already, and this is also crucial because um, we hear, apart from the um, governments of the EU member states, I think it's also really important that our societies understand the situation in Afghanistan and have a better understanding of why people are indeed forced to flee. And uh, even though with the uh, border policies, and I stop here, um, not many indeed make it to Europe, but many more would have to um, leave their country in search of protection. And I think it's really important that we all keep this in mind. And I'm really thankful for your work, um, Nazifa and uh, Hannah as well. I think um, you're both demonstrating how to bring up this issue from different angles. And um, yeah, we're just very happy to have you both here and that we were able to kind of bring you together on this occasion again. And I'm sure there are going to be many follow-ups. So thank you very much to both of you and all the best. Thank you so much, Neda. And well, thank you, Nasifa, for the work you do and just, just continue doing it.